In the series on retrieval augmented generation, we have looked into introduction to RAG or retrieval augmented generation. And we also looked into chunking methods in RAG. And we also gave a brief introduction to PDF parsing which is part of the data ingestion step of the RAG pipeline. So in this video, let's move on to embedding models. Embedding models are crucial irrespective of the input that we get, be it the PDF file or the Word document or Markdown. We need to actually embed them in order to store them in the vector DB or in order to feed the large language models or for that matter, any other model that we are going to be dealing with. What exactly is embedding? Embedding is a type of representation that is in numeric vectors format. Embeddings allow words with similar meanings to have similar representation. For example, let's take this simple toy example where we have the inputs ball, cat and dog. So these are the three words and let's say these three are the vectors that are embedded corresponding to these three words in a small three dimensional embedding space. We can see that the semantically similar words cat and dog which represent animals are closer together compared to ball. So this is the job of the embedding model. It needs to produce these embeddings, which are vectors that are semantically similar to be represented closer together compared to the ones that are less similar to be represented at a distance. So it doesn't matter really what sort of input that we get, whether it is audio or video or images or even text. We do have to embed them with some model in order to be used by the deep learning models, such as, you know, large language models or large vision models or any other models. Let's look into the embedding models that are specific to text. So they can be broadly divided into context independent ones or the context dependent ones. Under the context independent ones, we have prediction based models, which are say Vertvec, Glau or fast text. Under the frequency based model, where we actually literally start counting the tokens, we have bag of words or TF IDF. And under the context dependent one, where we consider the or we calculate the context for each of the token or the input that we get, we have the transformer based ones and we also have the recurrent neural network based ones. Under the RNNs, we have ELMO and Curve. Under the transformer based methods, which we are going to focus on today, and these are quite crucial when it comes to LLMs and RAG pipelines, we have BERT, ALBERT, SBERT, and GPTs. So let's start with the transformers, move on to BERT and to SBERT. This is how pretty much things have evolved. So we were living in the RNN era before the transformers came into picture. And once the transformers completely replaced the RNNs, we had models that were derived from the transformers, which were the BERT, which is the bidirectional version of it. And then we had SBERT, which is a fine-tuned version of BERT, which is the kind of state of the art when it comes to embedding. So the transformers need no introduction. Though they were initially designed for language translation tasks, they are the driving horses behind almost all of the large language models that we see today. At a high level, they are composed of two blocks, the encoder block and the decoder block. The encoder block takes the input and outputs a matrix representation at the output. And the decoder takes the output of the encoder and then produces the output. Now the encoder and the decoder blocks can be composed of several layers, though the original transformer has six layers in each of the encoder and the decoder blocks. All the layers are composed of multi-headed attention. The first difference between the encoder and the decoder is that the output of the last layer of encoder is fed to all of the layers of the decoder. And the second difference is that the decoder attention layers are masked. You can see that we are adding this mask to the input in order to get rid of those, in order to suppress those. And we are making use of just the ones at the bottom left of the matrix rather than using the one at the top right half of the matrix. So the strength of transformer is that unlike the recurrent neural networks or the LSTMs that process tokens independently, the power of transformer lies in its ability to capture the context of each token with respect to the entire sequence. And thus it captures a lot of context compared to any previous architecture that's defined for language processing. However, let's see what's wrong with the transformers. As a matter of fact, 
To reduce the computational overhead, its attention layers are designed only to attend to the pass tokens. So if you look at the this one, we can see that the top right is suppressed by introducing this infinity values. So the attention mechanism only focuses on the past tokens and not on the future tokens. So what's wrong with transformers? So let's take the simple example where the sentence goes, John came with Milo for the party. Milo had a lot of fun at the party. He is a beautiful white cat with fur. In a question answering task, the question could be something like, did Milo drink at the party with John? And without the forward context, if we are just given these first two sentences, we may tend to think that Milo is a human and so the LLM is going to respond by saying given that Milo had lots of fun indicates that Milo drank at the party. But if the LLM also catches the forward context, it's going to identify that it's a cat because the third sentence says that it's a white cat with fur. With that context, the LLM is going to answer saying that Milo is a cat and so it's unlikely that he drank at the party. So this is just a toy example, but that indicates how important the forward context is for a task like question answering. So that problem is addressed by the bidirectional encoder representations from Transformer. So what exactly is BERT? BERT is nothing more than the transformer encoder stacked together in sequence. The only difference is that BERT uses a bidirectional self-attention while the vanilla transformer uses constrained self-attention where every token can only attend to the context to its left. Before we look into BERT, let's quickly see the difference between a sequence and a sentence which is slightly confusing. For example, let's take these two sentences. They are separated by period and they are sentence A and sentence B. But when we put them both together, it forms a sequence. In the BERT paper, they have created a sequence and separated the sentences using the SEP token. And for each of the examples, they've given the CLS token in order to say that's a single sample. So to understand BERT, let's take this example where we are given two sentences. So why two sentences? Because question answering usually involves two sentences and BERT is designed to solve a task like question answering. So we're going to deal with two sentences where we have sentence A and sentence B and we have the BERT model at the bottom. So we have the sentence A and sentence B separated by the separator token. And as a first step, we embedded using the word piece embeddings. And once we get those embeddings, we need to differentiate each of the tokens that we are getting in the input. So for that, we'll be using the token embeddings, segment embeddings and positional embeddings. So the segment embeddings, we can see that for each of the sentences, it's the same. For sentence A, it's EA and for sentence B, it's EB. So that's the segment embedding. And then this positional embedding, which encodes the position of each of the tokens in the sequence. And once we have these segment embedding and positional embeddings, they are all added together with the input embeddings created by word piece embeddings, and they are passed to the BERT model. So for the pre-training of BERT, there are two ways in which the BERT model is pre-trained. One is using the masked language model and the other one is using the next sentence prediction. So this is a simple example which says the input and we can see that some of the words in the sentence are being masked using the masked token. So these are two input sentences. The man went to the store. He bought a gallon of milk. So the and of are masked here and they are separated by the SCP token. And the label for this is next, indicating this sentence comes after the first sentence. And there's another type of label, which is not next, where the two sentences are completely different. And that's labeled here as not next, indicating that these two sentences do not occur together. We feed the model similar examples. Whenever the token is masked, we get the output saying it's the masked LM. And where we have the C at the output, we get the label 0 or 1, indicating whether they are next sentences or not. And then we have the mask LM, indicating whether the input token is masked or not. If it's masked, then we compare the output that we get along with the actual token that has been masked. And then we use a loss to minimize the difference between the two. Here again, we 
indicate whether it's a next sentence or not and then we use a loss accordingly in order to train the BERT model but what's wrong with BERT really let's say we are given a collection of 10,000 sentences and we want to find the sentence that is most similar to say the sentence A this is the similarity search problem and when it comes to similarity search BERT is notorious for being very slow because we have these two sentences which are stacked together in a sequence let's say we want to find out the sentence out of the 10,000 which closely resembles or which has a very similar meaning to that of sentence A. So what we have to do is put them together and then we have to pass them through the BERT model and then we have to get the output and this is quite computationally expensive. For example, let's say we have 10,000 sentences. We want to pair each sentence with another and we want to find out what the similarity is. We can see that we'll already have have about 4.9 million pairs so this is a lot and this in the paper they say it's going to take about 65 hours to do this computation so that shortcoming of BERT is addressed by sentence BERT the main problem with BERT is that of the cross encoder architecture meaning that you know whenever we have two sentences to compare we put them together in a sequence like this and then we separate them using you know the CLS token the SCP token and we just have to feed them together to the the BERT model. When it comes to SBERT, it follows the Siamese architecture. The meaning of Siamese is that is that of twin or closely connected or similar. So we will treat the same model as a twin and we will give the input twice to the model in order to get the output as we will see. So whenever we are given two sentences, sentence A and sentence B, we put it through the BERT model, but the output of the BERT model is a huge matrix of 512 by 768. With the SBERT, we apply a pooling operation soon after the BERT output. We reduce the dimension to 1 by 768. We do it on both the sentences A and B and we finally get the embeddings U and V and then we concatenate them as U, V and the difference between the two and we pass the output through a vanilla neural network and we apply cross entropy loss in order to classify the sentences whether they are entitlement or whether they are neutral and whether they are contradiction. Similarly, we can also do a regression where we do the same thing for both the sentences, we get the same dimension dimensional output we apply pooling and get the lower dimensional output and we get the UNV embeddings and we do a cosine similarity and we do a mean squared error to find out exactly how different both the sentences are so the error is going to range from 0 and 1 and we're going to say if it's they are highly similar then the, the, we are going to be closer to 1 and if they are highly dissimilar we're going to be closer to 0. So that's regression. We can also do a triple objective where we kind of pass a positive, an anchor and a negative sentence and we do a triplet loss and we fine tune for this triplet objective in order to train the model with the triplet data set. So that's pretty much what I wanted to say about S BERT and BERT for embedding. So with that background, we can quickly jump into coding and let's see how simple it is to use the sentence transformer. So I'm going to create a new environment for the sentence transformers. It's creating a new environment and once it's created, I'm going to activate the environment to conduct create Conda activate ST for sentence transformers. I'm now going to install a sentence transformers using pip pip install sentence transformers. That was pretty quick. Now I'm going to go to the Python prompt and I'm going to be importing the sentence transformers. So I went into the Python prompt. I imported the sentence transformers from sentence transformers and I also created a model which is the all mini LM L6 V2 which is the all stands for a general purpose model for uh, embedding then it has pulled the model then all i'm going to do now is give some sentences let's use the sample sentences that they have given in their documentation so i'm just going to get the list of sentences and i'm going to get the encode the sentences and get the embeddings and i'm just going to print them for each of the sentences it's a 1 by 384 vector because we are given three sentences, we've got um, three vectors of dimension 384. We can also compute the similarity. So I'm just going to do a similarity computation using model that similarity of the embeddings with the embeddings. Now, because we are comparing the same embeddings, we should be getting a diagonal once actually. So if we look at similarities, 
we can see that we are getting one for the diagonals because we are comparing the uh, same sentence to the same sentence. So that's pretty much it, guys. So it, it all boils down to using the sentence transformers. I hope you found that hands-on and the theoretical element useful. And I will see you in my next video. Until then, take care.